On November 7, 2001, the Philippines was rocked by devastating news. Beloved and iconic actress Nita Blanca was found murdered near her workplace. And to this day, the circumstances of her death remain shrouded in mystery. Today, we will take a closer look at the theories surrounding her death. Nita Blanca was born Dorothy Ginto Jones on January 6, 1936 in Gapan, Commonwealth of the Philippines, a U.S. territory at the time. She entered the entertainment industry in 1951 after meeting actress Delia Razon. 15-year-old Dorothy met Delia at the Estrella Theater during a singing audition. Delia recalled that the young girl idolized her and wanted to be an actress herself. Moved by Dorothy's confidence, Delia invited the teenager to her home. A week later, Dorothy visited Delia at her home. Delia told Dorothy to put on a nice dress, lent her a pair of heels, and took her to meet Doña Sisang, the founder of Elvian Studios. Doña took a liking to Dorothy immediately after her screen test. Dorothy then adopted the stage name Nita Blanca based on her beautiful and fair white skin. Blessed with Dona's approval, Blanca was quickly cast in Reina Elena in 1951. She also got a role in Amor Mio that same year alongside big actors Nestor de Villa and Armando Goyena. Blanca's career continued to flourish with every movie and show she worked on. Even though Elvian Studios stopped producing motion pictures in 1961 and switched to post-production, Blanca's career wasn't affected much as she freelanced. She was later cast in numerous films and around 50 of them were with Nestor de Villa. Blanca also starred in shows and opera series where she played many roles. She was undisputedly known as one of the most successful actresses in the Philippines. In her later years, she worked as director for the Movie and Television Review and Classification Board in Metro Manila. As for her personal life, she married a man named Victorino Reyes Torres. They had a daughter named Catherine K. Torres. But the marriage didn't work out as they had to separate as divorce wasn't legal in the country at the time. She remarried in 1979. Her second husband was Roger Rod Lawrence Strunk, an American actor and singer. The marriage wasn't perfect as Strunk was accused of being an unfaithful husband. He even went as far as to commit adultery at the home he shared with his wife Blanca. The couple grew apart over time and they slept in separate rooms. They didn't talk much and this was perhaps one of the reasons why Strunk didn't notice that Blanca was missing one night. Like I mentioned earlier, Blanca was found on November 7, 2001, in a gruesome state in a car in the parking lot of Atlanta Center, Metro Manila. Her body was upside down, squeezed between the front and back seats. An autopsy revealed that Blanca had been stabbed approximately 13 times with a small blade measuring around 5.5 centimeters. Most of the stab wounds were small and superficial. There were two fatal stab wounds on her neck. The knife that was used to kill her was inserted from the left side, cut the jugular vein, and slashed through the right side, according to authorities. Blanca also suffered bruises on her face and head. After hearing the news of her death, Blanca's closest friends, Eddie Gutierrez and Annabel Rama, as well as Strunk, rushed to the scene. Annabel, who was also an actress, seemed distraught while Strunk was quiet and chose not to approach the car. His behavior was noted as odd by reporters. To look into the tragic case, a task force was formed by the Philippine National Police's Criminal Investigation and Detection Group. Task Force Marcia had the responsibility to get to the bottom of Blanca's death. A few days after the actress's body was found, TFM interviewed around 18 witnesses, two of them key witnesses. One of them said Blanca had visited the Casino Filipino the night before her body was found. This testimony was confirmed by the casino's security guard, as well as a distant cousin of Blanca. Security footage from the casino also showed her playing a game with three other ladies. Seemingly out of nowhere, there was a major breakthrough in the case. 
On November 18, 2001, a man was publicized by the police as the killer surrendered. His name was Pedro Philip Medell Jr. He claimed to be a professional killer who ended the life of the actress himself. He swore in a statement that he was part of the Tantoko project, which was proposed in early October 2001 by Mark Martinez, a businessman. Medell disclosed that he was offered 50,000 pesos to do the job. In his confession, Medell detailed an arranged meeting between him and Martinez that was set for a November 6 near Kamayan restaurant. When he arrived there, Medell said Martinez was nowhere to be found. Instead, a Caucasian man approached him and started a conversation. Medell recalled the man being named Rad. He confirmed that Rad was connected to Martinez and was thus also involved with the plan. Medell said Rad then asked him to go with him to another location to possibly meet Martinez, but then turned back as Martinez didn't show up again. Medell said he and Rad eventually had dinner together at Kamayan restaurant, chatting about the plan as they waited for Martinez, who did not show up at all. According to Medell, at around 10 p.m., he and Rad left the restaurant for Atlanta Center. They parked their car next to a dark green Nissan on the 6th floor parking lot. Medell said Rad then told him that he had to leave and that Medell should continue to watch for cues in the car. At 1 a.m. on November 7th, Medell said he was awoken by bright lights coming from the Nissan vehicle. He witnessed Rad, a woman in a striped blouse, and another woman exiting the car. Medell said the three of them seemed to be arguing about something. Medell later added that it was likely about a paper Rad wanted the striped blouse woman to sign. He said he then saw Rad suddenly push the woman in the striped blouse and started attacking her, with the other woman joining in. Taking it as his cue, Medell said he joined in attacking the woman. He delivered the final blows with his knife, stabbing her in the face and neck. Once confirming that the woman was dead, Medell said he and the two others left the scene within the next hour. He said he went home and hid the knife he used under his sink. Medell said he realized that the woman he helped kill was the actress Nita Blanca after seeing news about the dead woman. He stated that at that point, he felt guilty and decided to do the right thing and turn himself in. The public connected the dots after hearing Medell's shocking confession. They realized that he might have misheard the name Rod, a nickname of Roger Strunk, Blanca's second husband. They also concluded that the other woman was most likely Blanca's personal aide, Candelaria Tantoco. However, both Strunk and Candelaria strongly denied the accusations. Even a lie detector test proved their honesty. Strangely, Medell recanted his confession four days later during the preliminary investigation. He is said to have suddenly shouted and apologized and raised his arms and screamed that he had been tortured by the police to make a statement against Strunk. Medell's counsel, Roberto Omandang, affirmed that his client had indeed been receiving death threats while under police custody. Speaking to his wife, Medell said he was blindfolded and his genitals electrocuted, beaten and dunked in water. He said DNA from his hair and nails was taken so that authorities could pin the crime on him. The withdrawal of Medell's statement was quite a relief for Strunk and his lawyer. Strunk admitted that the false accusation tore his family apart and put a stain on his name and reputation. His lawyer, Malonga, planned to file a counter affidavit and asked Prosecutor Emmanuel Velasco to drop the charges against his client. There was another name from Medell's first confession that was put into the spotlight. That was Mike Martinez. Strangely, Mike Martinez was reported missing to the National Bureau of Investigation by his wife, Estrelita Martinez, the same day Medell gave his confession. According to Estrelita, her husband went to visit his sick mother in Paranaque City when armed men came to take him away. Nestorio Guayberto, the director of the Philippine National Police Criminal Investigation and Detection Group, had thought that perhaps another law enforcement group had taken Martinez for their own investigation. 
This, however, was hard to prove since there was no other information about the then 43-year-old businessman. Until today, the whereabouts of Mike Martinez remain unknown. Strong continued to be the prime suspect in the murder of Nita Blanca. In January 2002, Strong left the Philippines to visit his sick mother in the United States. The investigation into Blanca's death continued even with him outside the country. Based on circumstantial evidence and the most believable narrative by Task Force Marsha, Strong was charged with the murder of Nita Blanca in 2003. Since he was in the U.S. at the time, he was arrested by American authorities, but was released when the U.S. court denied an extradition request made by the Philippine government. The U.S. court also ignored a second extradition request, meaning Strunk continued to be a free man. The case hit a dead end on July 11, 2007, when Strunk took his own life. The 68-year-old man jumped from the second-floor balcony of Tracy Inn in California. Medell, meanwhile, continued to be in the custody of the NBI. Throughout the investigation, he was detained at Pesic City Jail, but he died at the age of 62 on April 9, 2010. Medell died of pneumonia, according to Dr. Alan Custodio, who attended to him after he complained of chest pain. The death of Nita Blanca was deemed unsolved. The NBI criticized Task Force Marsha for being inefficient in its handling of the case, as well as for forgetting many aspects of the investigation. According to the NBI, TFM also seemed to have ignored important details and didn't bother to create a reenactment of Medell's confession when he was still alive. With no suspect or motive for Blanca's death, the public and law enforcement came up with multiple theories about her demise. The first theory had to do with money. Some people believe she was financially involved with a politician. They thought that Blanca was given money by the politician, but then she refused it or was unable to pay it back. This angered and triggered the politician to teach her a lesson. This theory was rejected by Blanca's personal secretary, Elena de la Paz. According to Elena, Blanca had no money around the time of her death. She said Blanca borrowed money from Strunk's retirement fund. The second theory had to do with a casino. The theory was that powerful ex-generals and other corrupt businessmen who wished to launder their own wealth found themselves gradually becoming debtors. A former movie star who lent them money would increase the interest so high that it would become overwhelmingly hard to pay. This theory assumed that the former movie star had fallen ill, thus leaving the name list of those debtors in Blanca's hands. Perhaps to raise their debt, those powerful individuals decided to get rid of Blanca for good. This theory was rejected by some, especially fans of Blanca. In their opinion, this theory tarnished her reputation without any fundamental proof. People who worked with Blanca also debunked the theory, stating the veteran actress had always been an honest and kind soul who would never get involved with such shady business. The last theory had to do with her will. The theory was widely believed and pushed by investigators as the main motive. Blanca had around 85 million pesos in wealth and property, including 10 million pesos worth of condos in San Juan and $300,000 worth of property in California. Blanca had written a will not long before her death. It stated that all of her inheritance would go to her only daughter, Catherine K. Torres. Strong was likely upset about this, and it assumed Strong tried to persuade Blanca to add him to the will but was denied, and this likely pushed him to kill Blanca. This theory was supported by Catherine, who said Strunk had warned her that something bad might also happen to her. Catherine felt threatened and thus requested more security for her safety. This theory was rejected by radio host Inde Badide, who said that if Strunk was indeed abusing and using Blanca, surely none of her family and friend would be silent about it. Some also didn't believe Strong would have been able to pull off such a plan and work a normal job in the U.S., as well as take his own life if he indeed was the mastermind. If all theories are false to some degree, 
then what was the true motive behind the murder of the renowned veteran actress Nita Blanca? Was it for money? Power was strong merely a pawn used by the police, or was there another hidden motive that the authorities failed to uncover? Unfortunately, even today we can only speculate and are yet to find a clear reason for her tragic death. That's all for today. Thanks for watching.